Okay, so for these new videos, what we're going to have a look at is some problem solving. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pick some topics, we're going to have a look at two different styles of questions related to that topic. Hopefully you'll see some differences and some similarities in those questions, but ultimately we're just going to have a look at a couple of questions and how to actually go about breaking them down and figuring out what you've got to do in a particular question, particularly in these problem solving style of questions. So in terms of the questions we're going to have a look at, we're going to have a look at this one that's on the screen and also this one. And what we're going to do is we're just going to work through both of these and have a look at all those sort of differences and similarities in this topic. So what we're going to do is start on the first one and then we'll move on to this one. And for both of those questions, what I'd like you to really do is to pause the video, write the question down, have a go, and then obviously work through the answers as we sort of discuss through them. As with all of these videos as well, please do like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help out with these videos and obviously you can comment and say if there are any other topics that you'd like to talk through or particular questions and I can always put them in place then for one of the next videos. But in regards to this video, let's get started on our first question. So it says here, the diagram shows a swimming pool and the swimming pool is in the shape of a prism. The swimming pool is filled with water at a rate of 5 litres per second. Then it says Jeremy has 10 hours to fill the swimming pool and 1 metre cubed is 1,000 litres. Will he completely fill the swimming pool in 10 hours? And you must show all your work in. Now, there's quite a different, few different ways to approach this question. So we'll have a little discussion about the different ways that you could approach it. But ultimately with this type of question, what we really need to do is have a look at it and think actually what do we need to work out here? Now it's talking about the swimming pool being filled with water. And it gives us lots of information about that and time and litres per second and we've got some metric conversions there. But we're also having, going to need to just figure out what do we actually need to work out here. Now if we're filling up a swimming pool with water, we're looking at the volume. Okay, So we're looking at how much water actually fits within this swimming pool. We're going to assume that it's filled right up to the top as well. So if we're having a look at this then, we've got a prism on the right and that's made up of two different sort of 3D shapes. And depending on which way we split it up, we could imagine that there's a big cuboid sitting on top. And if I draw on the diagram here, we could imagine there's a cuboid. And on the bottom there, there's a triangular prism. Now it's not the only way of splitting it up. We could split it up in lots of different ways. I could actually get rid of that and I could split it this way. And actually what we've got there is a cuboid on the left and a prism on the right that has a trapezium as its cross-sectional area there of the face on the front, okay? If we have a look at this shape here, that forms a trapezium. Now I think just by the very nature of this question, I think it's a little bit easier if we go for the cuboid and the triangle. I'd like to try and simplify it wherever we can. But we could do it in either way to work out the volume of the shape. So if I split it across and think about this as being a triangular prism and a cuboid, that's probably going to be our easiest approach. Now once we've got the volume, we can have a look at tackling the rest of the question and breaking it down a little bit more. But in order to access any of this, we're going to have to work out its volume. So we may as well start with that and forget about the other bits for the moment. Now looking at this then, in order to work out the volume, we need to get the cross-sectional area. So by cross-sectional area again, we're looking at this cuboid here and then also the triangle that we have down there. So if we work these out separately, let's see what we get. So the cuboid's easy enough. I'm just going to write it on the front face. We've got a length of one going down the side and then a full length across the top if we're looking at the full cuboid of 15. So let's draw that in as well. So one times 15 will give us an area of that of 15. We then need to have a look at the triangle. So the triangle here we're going to have to find some of the lengths for. Now if we have a look this here will be our right angle, as shown by the little right angle above there. So our base and height, we're going to want to have a look at these lengths here, going down, and then also this little length here going across. Now we know obviously from the bottom here we've got a length of 10 and a length of 15. So in order to actually access that length there, we're going to just have to find the difference between them. So that's going to be 5 metres here. And then the height there is going to be a length of 2 metres. So we can work out the area of that triangle. We know it's base times height divided by two or half base times height. But if we just do base times height divided by two, we've got five times two, which is 10 divided by two, gives us an area of five. So there we go, we've got the area of the rectangle and the area of the triangle. So we have 15 and five. And if we add those together, we're gonna to get a cross-sectional area of 20. So 20 is the area of the cross-section. 
We know for working out volume then, and again I'll link the videos for some of these in the description. Um, we know to get the volume, we multiply that by the depth, which in the case of a swimming pool is obviously the depth of the water, but in the case of a prism we're looking at the depth, how far that cross section goes through the shape. And that's given to us over here on the left this time, which is 10 metres. So we're going to multiply that by 10, so 20 times 10 gives us our volume, which is 200 metres cubed. Okay, so there's our volume, 200 meter cubed. Now let's have a look at the rest of the question. So we've got some more information. It says the swimming pool is filled at a rate of five liters per second. And already that stands out because our units are in meter cubed. So that's gonna be something we're gonna to have to approach. It also says Jeremy has 10 hours to fill the swimming pool. Will he can completely fill it in 10 hours? And we'll figure that out in a sec. Now we've been given the metric conversion here, which is that one meter cubed is equal to a thousand liters. So in order to turn our volume here into litres, so that we can actually figure out how long it's going to take to fill the pool, we can change this metre cubed figure here into litres. So every one metre cubed is a thousand litres. So in order to turn that into litres, we can just multiply it by a thousand. Okay, every one of them is a thousand litres and we have 200 of them. So times that by a thousand and that gives us 200 with three zeros there, which is 200,000 liters there we go so there's our next step we now have the pool in liters we can now go about figuring out how long it's going to actually take to fill so it says in the question there it takes five liters per second and obviously we have two hundred thousand liters to fill up so let's move this out of the way and let's figure out how we might get that now into an amount of time let's put that over there okay so if we have two hundred thousand liters every five liters is going to take one second so in order to figure out how many seconds that's going to take, we're going to need to divide this number by 5. So obviously we're going to do this without a calculator for the moment, although if you've got a calculator that's fine to use, but we're going to imagine this is a non-calculator question. So 200,000, and we'll divide it by 5, there we go, and that's going to give us an amount of seconds. So 5 goes into 20, 4 times, and then we have the rest of the zeros, so 40,000. So now we've got 40,000 seconds that the pool's gonna to take to fill, okay? But it says here, will it be full in 10 hours? So we know it's gonna be 40,000 seconds and we wanna compare that to 10 hours. So we need to figure out actually how many seconds there are in 10 hours or another approach we could take, we could turn 40,000 seconds into hours, okay? We could start dividing it by 60 and turning it into, um, turning it into minutes and then getting it back to hours. But I think the easier approach for this question is to actually turn the 10 hours into minutes. I think it's a lot easier here, particularly if we're not using a calculator, to multiply 10 and to start turning that back into minutes than it is to start dividing 40,000 by 60. Okay, so let's have a look at this then. So if we've got 10 hours, we know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So if we times that by 60, that's gonna give us the amount of minutes in 10 hours. So that's gonna be 600 minutes and then we want to turn that into seconds to make a comparison and we know there are 60 seconds in every minute so if we do 600 and multiply that by 60 that's going to give us the amount of seconds in 10 hours now six times six at the front is 36 and then we have three zeros there so that's 36,000 and that is seconds so obviously in the question here, we worked out that the pool is gonna take 40,000 seconds to fill and 10 hours is only 36,000 seconds. So in terms of answering this question, look, the pool is actually gonna take longer than 10 hours to fill as it's 40,000 rather than 36,000. So in terms of finishing off our question here, we would say no, okay? And then backed up by our working because it's gonna take 40,000 seconds and 10 hours is only 36,000 seconds. Now obviously that's only one way of approaching it. As I said, at the start, you could have actually split that question up into a trapezium and a cuboid instead. That would have been something different you could have done. And also in this question here, you could have actually turned the 40,000 seconds into hours Obviously, which would have been a lot easier if you had a calculator, not so easy if you don't, but there was two different approaches there that you could have taken at different stages. But there we go, there's our first question. Now we're gonna have a look at another question on volume, which is just a little bit different. 
Okay, so for this question, we actually have an easier volume to work out, but the concept of the question is different again. It says here the diagram shows a fish tank in the shape of a cuboid, and hopefully we know with a cuboid the volume of that is obviously nice and easy for us to work out. It says the dimensions of the tank are 50 centimetres by 32 centimetres by 20 centimetres, and again that's shown to us on the diagram. It says the tank is three quarters full of water and sand, and again we can see that, and the ratio of the volume of water to the volume of sand is 5 to 1. Work out the number of litres of water in the tank. Now first thing first, what comes that or stands out to me here is obviously that our units are given in centimetres and it's asking us about litres. So we're actually going to have to use one of our metric conversions here and actually figure that out for ourselves. It's not been given to us so it's something that we need to know in this question and we'll discuss that in a little bit. But for this question here, again, we are looking at the volume of this tank. And again, there are two different ways that you could approach this. Now, I think the easiest way to approach this is to first think about, well, what's the volume of the tank if it was full right to the top? And that's easy enough for us to work out to get started on this question. And that's just to work out the volume of the cuboid. Now we know with working out volume we need to work out the area of the cross section. When it comes to a cuboid you can do a little cheat and you can just multiply all the numbers together but we should really work out the area of the cross section and then multiply it by the depth. But in the case of this question, particularly as we're going to practice this non-calculator, I think it's actually easier, and I don't like doing it, but picking the two easier numbers to multiply to start with, 20 times 50. And if we do 20 times 50, 2 times 5 is 10. Let's just write this down. 20 times 50, 2 times 5 is 10, and add the two zeros, and it comes to 1,000, and that just makes it nice and easy to then multiply that by the 32. So to get the volume here, we can do 32 multiplied by 1,000, and that gives us a total volume there of 32,000. There we go. And not forgetting our units there, that is centimetre cubed. Now it's up to you what approach you take at this point. We could start working out then what three quarters of that is to figure out what volume of the tank is actually filled up and then have a look at this ratio. And as you can see, obviously, although we've got volume involved, we've also got fractions and ratios and also conversions involved in here as well, as well as, ha as, well as having to obviously break this all down. Now I think the easiest thing at this point is probably just to turn this straight into litres. And the unit conversion that you need to know is a thousand centimetre cubed okay is equal to one liter okay so that's one of the important unit conversions that we need to know and it might not necessarily be given to you so it is one that you need to know just like on the last one that that one meter cubed was a thousand liters so for this one here definitely a little key point to make sure that you've got there a thousand centimeter cubed is one liter now for the next stage of this, we need to obviously turn it into litres. So in this sense, we have 32,000 centimetre cubed. So if we want to turn that into litres, the opposite of what we did last time, this time we're going to divide it by 1,000. And if we divide that by 1,000, we can knock off the three zeros and we get 32 litres. There we go. And there is the volume of our full tank. Now obviously the next piece of information in the question said to us that the tank is three quarters full of water and sand. So if we find three quarters of 32, we'll be able to find out what quantity there is actually the water and the sand. So if we find three quarters of 32, and there we go, three quarters of 32, and that's easy enough for us to do, we just divide by four and times by three. 32 divided by 4 is 8, times that by 3 is 24. So we have 24 litres, there we go, that are water and sand. Now you can imagine at this point, if I hadn't have done this conversion straight away, I would have had to have found 3 quarters of 32,000, which isn't necessarily more difficult, but it is a little bit more fiddly there with the larger number. So it's probably better for us to have made that conversion straight away, so just something to be thinking about in that question there. We now know how much is full up with water and sand, okay, that's up to this point here where the water stops. And then it tells us in that last piece of information there that the ratio of the volume of water to the volume of sand is 5 to 1. So essentially all we need to do is take that 24 litres that we have and split it in the ratio 5 to 1. Now hopefully you remember obviously with ratios we're going to figure out how many parts there are in total and that's 6 parts. So if we do 24 divided by 6 we'll be able to split that up in the ratio. So let's write this out. So five to one, I'm gonna figure out what we're gonna multiply both of those by. So 24 
divided by six, our total amount of parts there is four. So we're gonna multiply both of these numbers by four to get our corresponding litre values. So five times four is 20, and one times four is four. And again, remembering just a quick double check there to add those two together, make sure it adds up to our original amount, which it does, 24. So in terms of answering our question here, look, just remembering that the five was the water, the one was the sand, and it wants us to work out the number of liters of water in the tank, and we've got that right there, 20. So there we go, our final answer there would be 20 liters. Now again, with all these different types of questions, there is another way of doing it. What we actually could have done, and I don't think I prefer this method, but it is a nice method that you could use, you could actually just look at the height of the tank. So the height of the tank, we know it's only gonna be three quarters full up to there. So you could find three quarters of 32, the height, and that would give us a cuboid that's just in the shape of the sand and the water. You could even then go a little step further and you could split that height up in the ratio of five to one and you could just find out what the height of the water is. And I think if we were to do that relatively quickly, three quarters of 32 we already knew was 24, so the height would have been 24. And then when we split that into the ratio five to one, the height there is only 20. And if we do 20 times 20 times 50 and multiply that all out and turn it into liters, we could actually do take that approach as well. And that's quite a nice approach that you could also have a think about and you could have a try of obviously trying to work it out that particular way. But I think that that way was may maybe not quite as intuitive as just working out the volume and splitting it up from there. But there we go, another question, another way of approaching it. Some obviously some discussion on different ways that you could have approached it along the way, whether you convert it straight away or not, or whether you look at the height and go for the, uh, the volume of the cuboid that's just the water, it's completely up to you. But I think that was the, the easiest way and the most logical way to go about working this out. But there we go, there is the end of our second question, and that's the end of our little video on two different problem solving style questions related to volume. And again, like I said at the start, please do like, comment and subscribe if these are useful and helpful, and please do let me know if there are any specific topics that you'd like me to pick out some questions. But there we go, that's the end of the video, and I'll see you for the next one.